Hello, hey, this is Roy Richardson, your friendly neighborhood tech troublemaker, and I'm going to show you how to install Parallel 17, and then we're going to install Windows 11 on my M1 Mac. What? You're going to install Windows on the M1 Mac? You can do this with Parallel 17, and you have to do the ARM-based version of Windows 10 or Windows 11. Currently, Windows 11 is only available through the Windows Insider program, but anybody can join the Insider program if you want to get a taste of it. And what you're going to find is once you get Windows 11 installed, wait a second, they kind of stole some stuff from the Mac dock. What? 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 Anyway, so let's get started. If you like this kind of stuff, if you like tutorials, subscribe. Anyway, now let's do what we got to do. If you go out to the interwebs, you'll see, hey, here's the Parallels website. And I decided to buy a full license because I was doing things. Strangely, when I first visited the site, it was $79.99. And now suddenly it's $99.99. So I opened up another browser and went back and got it for $79.99. Don't ask me what was going on with the site and your mileage may vary. If you happen to be a college student, I recommend getting the $39.99 deal because that makes it very cheap. You only need, you know, four virtual CPUs for what you're going to do on a Mac with Windows anyway, probably. Unless you're a gamer, if you're going to do gaming, uh, you may have to think of something else. But if you get the full version license, you can do, well, still up to four CPUs and up to eight gig of memory. So hopefully you added some memory when you bought your M1 Mac because I know the standard Mac is only eight gig. So you gotta be careful. You may have to run a parallel with just your Windows version with just four gig if you're not doing very much with it. If you're a gamer, hopefully you ramped up the memory on your uh, M1 when you bought it to 16 gig, which at the time of this recording is the most you can get on a Mac. So there you go. All right, so you can download a trial version of Parallels and I would recommend doing that first before running off and buying it. Find out if you need it. If you're not gonna use it enough to justify it, it may not be worth it. And you can just borrow a friend's machine that has Windows and just see what happens. So, all right. Now I've already downloaded Parallels and I've already done the install, so yeah, here we go. Here it is, Parallels. I've already done the install. It basically said, hey, by the way, you have an M1. I'm going to download the ARM-based version of Parallels. I said, okay, cool. Go for it. Make that happen for me. If you go look at... Uh... So here's what, how it pops up when you initially download it and you hit double-click on it. And they install Parallels Desktop. And it's pretty much next, next, next. Till it gets here and it says, hey, and there's gonna be a step where it asks you if you wanna walk, run it as a trial or do you wanna buy it now? I bought it, so let's move on. All right, so here it goes. It says, hey, you know, one's built an ARM process, complete parallel setup, run the installation, man. Okay, so it's done that already. Ta da And so here it says, hey, create a new you one. Know, so here's my screen. This is the insider preview. And so I scroll down and I download the ARM64 um, Insider Preview of Windows 10. Now, it downloads a, a VHDX file. Now, what is a v v VHDX file? It is basically an OS image of, of a running, completely installed version of Windows. Let me be more specific. So if you're familiar with virtualization, where you are running another OS on top of a different OS, and that's what Parallels is doing. Parallels is doing virtualization, where it creates a hardware abstraction layer, and it says, okay, Windows wants to do this. Let me go talk to the Mac and say, Windows wants to do this using your methodology. Tell me how to do that. And so that's how it makes Windows work, is by doing virtualization. Yeah, in a VMware world, where like for example VMware Fusion, um, same thing. It's virtualizing OS so that you can run a different OS on top of your current operating system. So in the case of Mac, you could have ran VMware Fusion and installed Windows. I don't know yet if VMware has, Fusion has a M1 version. I haven't looked. Parallels is considered the best right now. Um, and so I went with Parallels to give it a try. thought this will be great. I'll use this. And so it basically downloads the completed installed image. That's why when you download it, it's about nine gig. So it's like the complete operating system already installed and it's about nine gig. And when we run it, we're gonna to wanna to tell it, well, you can have two virtual CPU and you can use four gig of memory, which four gig 
is probably the minimal amount you can give Windows and actually not have it be awful to run. So let's go. So here you see um, I have downloaded. I've downloaded it, so there it goes. And here I am in parallels, and I'm going to say, let's install. And so it says, hey, show me a, a VXD file. So it went to my downloads directory, and it found my ARM-based version of Windows 10 that I downloaded. Now, like I said, it's a it's a nine gig file, and so I'm going to choose continue because that's what we're going to install. Continue. And then it says, hey, what are you going to do? Pro productivity or using gaming only full screen 3D games? I am not going to game with my version of Parallels with my version of Windows. I'm just going to use it to run some utilities that only are currently available for Windows. For example, Notepad++. Would you guys please make a version of Notepad++ for Mac? I'm just telling you, that's what you need to do. You just need to go and make a version of Notepad++ for Mac. Just saying. Um, what do I want to call it? Eh, Windows 10 works pretty good for me. I'm cool with that. Create an alias on the Mac desktop. Um, that way it just creates a shortcut. Just double click and it'll just open it up and go. So, and it says customize settings before installation. I am one of those weirdos that likes to customize things. I do not do next, next, next. I do custom every time because there may be something I don't want you to install or there may be something I want you to install that you for some reason don't install by default. How many times have you ever installed something and it didn't install everything? Urgh. So here we go. It's going pretty good. Why? Because M1 Max rock, man. They're so fast. Why wouldn't it go fast? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm cool with the size. Uh, options, let's go look, let's see, start up and shut down, start up and shut down manually, yes. So, I'm not going to run Windows very often, I'm just going to do it when I'm doing a project or when I need to demo something, and so, you don't, I don't recommend setting up Windows to start automatically every time you start your Mac. How often are you going to run Windows? I'm not, and so, you know, right here though, here's an option that says I automatically start up as soon as I start the Mac up. No, we're gonna go with start up and shut down mainly. Um, sharing, so here you can create a folder to allow you to transfer files back and forth between the Mac and Windows. And so that can be helpful. Um, right now I'm just gonna leave it to defaults. Uh, right now it says share iCloud, Dropbox, and Google Drive. That's cool. Map, Mac volumes to Windows. So I'm gonna leave those defaults um, on share Windows. Access Windows Solar to Mac, share OneDrive. Yeah, we can do that. Applications. Um, so it says show Windows. So I could do a shortcut to the application and it'll show it in my Mac doc. I, I don't want that. No. Um, yeah, I don't. And then it's going to ask me about full screen. It's one of do you want to use all, you know, all, sc all screens. You always want to display in full screen. Use all the displays you have in full screen. So if you have more than one monitor, that may not be the way to go. Okay, um, picture in picture. That's kind of cool because I can kind of have it, you know, running in a in a window while I'm doing other stuff. Uh, web and email. I can enable Safari. I don't want to do that. If you had something that you know needed kind of fake out to pretend to be Internet Explorer, I don't recommend doing that. Maintenance. So here, I can schedule Windows maintenance, such download, install, updates. Here, if you're going to leave Windows running a lot, then this would be kind of helpful to have it go out and, and go and, and download the updates for itself because Windows needs patching a lot. That's why it's Patch Tuesday, and sometimes Microsoft has to come out with an emergency patch because crap, you know, <laughs> that's just how it goes with Windows, is it sometimes just have to do that, you know. Okay, and then more options. I'm not going to make any changes there. Hardware. So here, I may want to tweak. Right now, it says I'm going to give you four CPUs and six gig of RAM up to three. I could go in here and change that. I'm going to go with the defaults for now. If it gets to be a problem, then I may go in here and tweak it down. I would certainly want to give it less. I don't want to give it more. Luckily, this M Mac M1 Mac Mini. I do have 16 gig of RAM, and I have all the this available CPUs that they the uh, cores that they have available. So, 
Um, graphics here, system memory is used for graphics, but there's no dedicated graphics card in an M1 Mac at this point. So because of that, you're using the CPU-based graphics, which has been phenomenal. I really love it. It's really fast, and because the memory is managed so well in M1 Mac, it's a good thing. Keyboard, uh, shared printer, so I can have it use my Mac printer. That's cool. Network here, it's shared network, so that when I go to the internet on my on Windows on my Mac, it will use my internet connection to get out. And then um, sound, it's gonna default that. USB and Bluetooth, so I can allow Bluetooth options. There's my, you know, hard disk. I'm not gonna go, I can enable CROM access if I need to, and then boot order, I can say, you know, hey, there's a things option there. Uh, and then security, so, if you're really paranoid, which maybe you should be, maybe you shouldn't be, you may want to isolate Windows from the Mac to the point where it can't talk to the Mac at all, even though it's running. Um, and so, right now I'm going to go with the defaults. We'll just see how it goes. And then you have a backup option. You could do backups with Time Machine using this. I don't have any reason to back up this Windows because it's just strictly for... Um, what I'm doing, um, yeah, I may want to change the disk space. I don't want it to go take up all my disk space, man. You can't have my disk space, man. It's mine. It's mine. Mine. Let's go advance, say to trim. All right, we'll just. Yeah, I, I don't want to give it that much. You can have 72. I'm gonna change to 72. Why? Because there's even though I have the space. I do not want to de dedicate that much space to this Windows experiment that I'm just going to run occasionally. Um, but unfortunately, Windows is a hog, and because of the way it is, I uh, there any backup Windows before operation. Yeah, sure. Okay, all right. Let's see. I may have broke it. Let's find out. Cool. All right. Main option changes, and... Continue. All right, we're starting Windows 10. Let's see what happens. Parallels not using my camera. Why do you want to use my camera? Um, microphone? Why do you want to use my microphone? We'll see, this may wind up bad. We may wish we didn't do this. All right, and now uh, Parallels Toolbox. So these are things that add functionality to Windows so that it talks better back and forth between parallels and so you do want to install these I recommend okay and they install pretty quick pretty quick what do you think all right Accepting an user license agreement. There is something in there about selling your firstborn child. So it's uh, my firstborn's an adult now. So I'm just going to send them a card and say, Parallels make him looking for you. They've, they've come to claim you. So, yes, that's the thing. <gasps> Parallels from Accent. Plain use for Accent. Simply for everyday task. Well, we'll find out. No, I don't really need your alarm. Uh, download video. Yeah, that may come in handy. These tools will be neat. We'll find out. Break time, capture area, library. Okay, airplane mode. Those are cool tools. Alright, so done. And we'll kill off all the notifications here. Um, yeah. Don't bug me right now, man. I'm busy. I'm busy. I am installing parallels. Parallel, well, well. Parallelism. I know. Think it's gonna work? What do you think? Think it's gonna work? I hope so. It should work. I don't have any reason why it shouldn't. Right? I'll put some cool music here so we have something to listen to while we wait for time to pass. <gasps> it's Roy. By the way, my name's Roy. I'm a tech troublemaker, in case you didn't know that. My job is to make IT wrong so that you can get it right. 
We're almost there. That's what it says. Almost there. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. Installation complete. Click to continue. Um, while there's already updates available, of course there is. We're going to go ahead and download the updates because... It's dangerous on Windows these days without antivirus, and Windows does come with an antivirus called Windows. Well, it's called Microsoft Defender, and so thought I hit that button. There we go. I guess I didn't hit it correctly. Now it's downloading. And so I do recommend keeping your Windows up to date. I would look for updates at least weekly. Um, if you get a notification from Microsoft that there's an update that needs to be installed, cool. I'm up to date. Life is good. Edge. Okay. Sure, let's complete the setup. <gasps> Inspirational. Log in the sync data. I may do that later. We'll skip for now. Um, okay. Walk in the Microsoft Edge. Dun da da. If you really like it, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Yeah, this is the kind of videos I do all the time. If you want to know when I release a new video, ring that bell. Ring that bell. Thank you so much for watching. I would really love it if you would leave a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see me install next. What would you like to see me preview, demo, and demonstrate? Love to see that. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a blast. I hope it was for you. Bye.